Excuse me, you know I already got a whorehouse operating. Ah, oh, you can't call them crib cows, whores. I'm talking about a proper sporting house with class girls and clean linen and a proper hygiene. Well, I, I don't think you're going to find my clientele up here uh, too interested in that sort of thing. They will be once they get a taste of it. McCabe and Mrs. Miller is a film that came out in 1971 that's written and directed by Robert Altman. So McCabe and Mrs. Miller is a Criterion patron pick from Mitchie. And for those who follow this channel, you'll know that Mitchie is no other than my friend from a land down under. And for people that really follow this channel, y'all also know that Mitchie is a gigantic Robert Altman fan. Probably the biggest Robert Altman fan that I know. And he's actually responsible for getting me into Robert Altman to begin with. I mean, thanks to Mitchie, I've seen The Player. I've seen Shortcuts. I've seen Three Women, I've seen The Long Goodbye, I've seen Nashville, and now I've seen McCabe and Mrs. Miller. And after watching it, I very much enjoyed this film. It's not my favorite Robert Altman film because I definitely put a film like Shortcuts and Three Women above it. But nevertheless, it's still a great film and I knew through the opening sequence that I was going to dig this film quite a bit because right from the get-go, it establishes its world and establishes its atmosphere so incredibly well through the uses of Leonard Cohen's music that we get throughout the film, but, you know, most notably the opening sequence, because the song The Stranger by Leonard Cohen that's used in the opening sequence, to me, is essentially a perfect song to use, because not only, as I mentioned, does it really establish your atmosphere through its folky and classic country-type sound, it, it also, contextually in terms of its lyrics, I think actually has a huge relation to not only the characters in the film, but also where the narrative takes these characters by the end of the film. And as I mentioned, that... That folky, classic country type sound, I think really goes a long way because there's just something really soulful and human about that type of sound that I think relates very well to this film. And an interesting fact about the opening sequence to this film is that near the end of it, we see the main character, McKay, played by Warren Beatty, off of the distance. And in that shot, he lights a cigar. And the flame that's used to light that cigar is very vibrant and noticeable, even off in the distance. And apparently, Stanley Kubrick was amazed that Robert Altman was able to capture it in that way and Stanley Kubrick personally called Robert Altman up and asked him how he was able to get that shot and Altman just explained that they all intentionally waited for the outside conditions to be perfect so that way the flame could be as visible as it was and I just find it really interesting that Kubrick asked Altman this very specific question about natural lighting because by this time he had already released A Clockwork Orange and obviously Barry Lyndon was his next film and I just, it kind of gets me wondering that this was perhaps a question that he was asking because he was already in his mind preparing for his next project because Barry Lyndon is a film that's famously known for its revolutionary use of natural lighting. But anyways, as I mentioned, I feel like this film does do an excellent job at world building because to me, the first 15 or 20 minutes of this film are pretty much just straight world building. It's just doing its best to establish its setting and come off with a sense of authenticity because a lot of it takes place in this bar slash restaurant and there's a lot of different characters in that scene. There's so much noise going on. You can't hardly hear what anybody is saying. And, you know, in a way, I feel like that does make it feel very authentic. This is how people would interact with each other in this setting. And it's also taking its time to establish a lore and reputation around the main character, McCabe, that actually does have a payoff by the end of the film because in a way it comes full circle that to me contributes so much to the character's flaws and his overall downfall. But this film really kicks up and gets incredibly engaging when the character Mrs. Miller pops up that's played by Julie Christie. Um, not only is she just a very engaging character to watch that's filled with so much personality, but the dynamic that is established between these two characters is something that is quite unorthodox for your classic western because for my knowledge a lot of the classic westerns a lot of the main lead characters in the film are obviously men but usually these men kind of come off as like superhero like indestructible cowboy type characters and here the main male character McCabe actually is more flawed than Mrs. Miller I mean not that Mrs. Miller is perfect she also has flaws of her own but she just exudes this level of confidence that, sure, McCabe in a sense has, but the confidence that Mrs. Miller has feels a lot more earned and genuine as opposed to McCabe, 
who just seems kind of in over his head and doesn't quite understand the full situation and doesn't quite understand the consequences of his actions especially with what it progresses to in the finale of this film. And to me, McCabe never really comes off as truly intimidating, at least in the same way that Mrs. Miller does, because when she first brings her presence on screen, um, she, to me, is an intimidating person. She's somebody that truly seems to know what she's talking about and means business right from the start. And I just loved her character for that. And again, I love the dynamic that they shared and what it kind of both evolves and devolves into. And it's without a doubt that a lot of his financial success and the reputation that he gains as the film progresses is a lot thanks to Mrs. Miller. And I think that's something that's kind of a character, like an internal character conflict that he's struggling with because it's almost like he's trying to find some sort of purpose. He's desperately trying to contribute something towards the business's success that he can feel more grounded and comfortable in, while at the same time trying to do something about his loneliness, but it's almost like his bravado and his reputation won't really allow himself to be fully vulnerable. But in terms of how I feel about this film as a whole, I think the first act is really great because as I mentioned, the world building is at its best and the way that it establishes its characters is, again, I couldn't really ask for more. But when it comes to the second act of this movie, I still think it's, it's decent, but there's something about it that doesn't feel like it's quite progressing into significant moments. You kind of really want more out of where it's going with its characters and with its conflict. And there's also some moments in this film that are established that occur like at the end of the second act and at times feels like they're bleeding into the third act that it feels like they're gonna expand upon certain subplots that are established, but they never really grow into anything bigger than that moment that we see. And I understand, like, this is probably just more world building. But for me, this film really picks back up when McCabe realizes that his life actually may be in danger. This is when, to me, it just becomes engaging until the end. I mean, the final 20 minutes or so of this film, I think is riveting. And it's not just because of the amazing shootout sequence that we get in the finale, but it's also just because of the conflict and of the tension and of the kind of despair that the main character feels that leads up to all of it. And I also love that on top of everything else that this film offers thematically, it also kind of serves as a cautionary tale about how big businesses will inevitably become the death of small businesses. And obviously this is a theme that is more relevant today than ever with just the monumental power that gigantic corporations have and just how easy it is for them to dominate the marketplace. And I just love how this film shows that, yeah, even in the Old West, this was an ongoing problem, except back then it was probably even worse in the sense that they could actually tell you that you sell or you die. I mean, sure, even today it's also sell or die, but the die part is a little bit more metaphorical. And in terms of the finale, I also love that it was incredibly unpredictable because you really have no idea where it's gonna go with the character's fate. And obviously I'm gonna leave that up for y'all's imagination to ponder on, but I love how this film doesn't have any indication and expresses to the audience what will happen. And it makes the shootout and the finale in general a lot more satisfying and a lot more intense. So I'm going to give McCabe and Mrs. Miller a strong 7 out of 10. And then sweeping up the jokers that he left behind, you find he did not leave you very much, not even laughter. Thank you again, Mitchie, for not only requesting me McCabe and Mrs. Miller, but also for just introducing me to Robert Altman to begin with. Which does remind me to please consider joining the Discord for $5 a month through Patreon. We have movie nights every Friday, and we do voice chats every Saturday, and you get to talk with Kino Lords across the globe 24-7 through the text chat. It's a whole lot of fun, and I don't think you'll regret it, but that's all I gotta say about McCabe and Mrs. Miller. If you really enjoyed what I had to say about the film, just give it a thumbs up and share it amongst your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be updated on more film-related content.